Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, some advanced radical equations. We've done these before. Let's take a look at uh, what's our method. I mean, how do we do something like this? Remember these? Okay. Yeah, we just square both sides, right? Okay. And we have on the left, we have x minus 1. On the right, we have 16. And then, of course, we move that over. x becomes 17. Because we take sometimes negative numbers, and because since we square them and they turn into positive numbers, then we have to check this to make sure they work. So let's, every single time you do these radical equations, stick in your number. 17 minus 1 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Yep, that works. Boom, there you go. Okay, that's our old one. All right. This, look at this. Oh, that looks great. That looks fantastic. Okay. Man, this looks awesome. All right. Pause it, copy it, and let's take a look at it together. Okay. Same thing. Even though there's a cubed there, and there's, you know, an awful looking thing over there. Same old, same old. These, they're going to contrive these to where they work nicely for you to work out. But you do need to check them just in case you derive some kind of a positive from a negative. It doesn't actually work. So anyway, same thing you're going to do. You're just going to go like this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to rewrite this like this. This goes to the right side. So it turns into x plus 2, right? So that's gone. All right, here we go. Okay, there's our new one. And of course, to get rid of the cube root, you're going to have to cube each side. And I just wrote a two for us some reason. Oh, there you go, it's a three. It just looked like a two because of the angle and everything. Okay, okay. Well, the nice thing is, you don't have to mess with this at all on the left side. You just rewrite it, right? Because anything cubed is just gonna be what's under, underneath the radical. So there you go, just copy it. But over here is a different story. Now, uh, make sure, do not just go, oh, I got it. That'll be x cubed plus uh, 2 cubed, 8. I got it. No, you're missing an entire thing. Those will be the last, uh, the first and the last terms, but that won't be everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this. And we're going to have to actually do, do the multiplication. So we're going to have to go x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, and if you go ahead and do part of this, you can see that what you have is, I'll just go over here with it. You know what, I'll go, I'll go with a different color. Um, uh, let's just go, I'll have x plus 2 times, and then we'll have x squared plus 4x plus 4. Because if you put these two together, that's what you'll get. So x times x squared will be x to the third. x times 4x is 4x squared. x times 4 is 4x. So we're done. There we go. All right. All right. Now we have... Um, I'm sorry, we're done with this part, not this part. So we have 2x squared plus 2x squared plus 2 times 4x is 8x, and then plus 8. Okay, so now we've got those six terms. Let's mash them all together, and uh, you'll see something nice that happens. And that's, this is what's nice that happens. There's an x cubed. You can see what happens to both sides of the equation. It goes away. Okay, done. 4x squared, 2x squared gives you 6x squared. Okay? Done. 4x and 8x give you 12x. And then, of course, at the very end, we have our 8 there. So, okay. So, of course, this goes away, that goes away. Uh, whoa, look at this. The, even the 6x squared go away. That's nice. Okay. So, I'm going to move my 12x over here to give me negative 12x. I'm going to move my negative 4 over here to give me uh, positive 4 plus 8 will be 12. And of course, negative 12 times what gives you 12? Negative 1. That's your answer. We think. Let's check it. Since we uh, say it's working, let's give it a whirl here. Okay. First off, oh, let me, let me undo all this. I just erase all this stuff. Okay. We say the answer is negative 1. Okay. So let's just copy it. We got negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Cube root of all that. Plus, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 6 times 1 is 6. Minus 4. All right. Minus x, which will be plus 1. Minus 2 equals 0. Okay. All right. Well, uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. We'll move that over to this side, and that gives us positive 1. So what is the cube root of 1? Negative 1 plus 6 is 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. What's the cube root of 1? Of course, it is 1. We just proved it works. So there we go. Treat them just like the old ones. The x cubes will cancel out. Just make sure you correctly multiply through that, that uh, uh, 
cube that you do with the x and the negative 2, or the 2 in this case. Okay, this, oof, copy this thing down. We're going to do something with it. <clears throat> okay, this, of course, you realize is going to have to be over to that side. Okay, so our new equation is going to look like this. Left side, k minus 5. Right side will be positive k, square root of k, excuse me, and then uh, negative 1. Okay, so this stays here. This part goes over to the right, and there we go. Okay, and you can see what's going to happen here. We're going to have to square both sides, right? Okay, and this is where it gets a little bit strange. If you square both sides, this is an easy one because <clears throat> it just, you know, you just get k minus 5 on the left side. This, however, means you're going to have to actually, you know, Square, square this, which means you're going to actually go to the square root of k minus 1 multiply it again. Okay, that makes sense. You're squaring both sides. Okay, so the square root of k times the square root of k is just k. Okay, and then we have the square root of k times negative 1 is, <coughs> excuse me, negative square root of k. And then another one, negative 1 times the square root of k is another negative square root of k plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. And there we go. Okay. All right. Now, look at this. The k's go away. Let's get this over here and our like numbers or constants over here, I'm going to call them. All right. So a negative minus a negative, that would be 2 times the square root of k, negative. But over here, it becomes positive 2 square root of k. Over here, this 5 becomes a positive 5, and that equals a 6, okay, plus the 1. Ugh! Now, look at this weird thing. I mean, you know, if, if you did this, if somebody went, oh, 2x equals 6, you'd go, oh, yeah, just divided by 2, I got it, x is equal to 3, okay? And that's right. And we're doing the same thing. We're just going to take this, uh, you know, and divide by the 2, just like we would in, in any other case. So we're going to go divide by 2, divide by 2. So that goes away. So we have a new equation. The square root of k equals 3. Well, and again, we're at a situation where we need to square both sides to, to, to solve for k. So we're going to square this, okay? The square root of k times the square root of k is just k. The, you know, I'm excuse me, not the square root, squared. And 3 squared will be 9. So we're saying that the answer is 9. 9, k is 9, okay? Well, let's check. Let's stick it back in there and see what happens, all right? If I put a 9 in here, and I put a 9 in here, okay, I get the square root of 9 minus 5. Well, 9 minus 5 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2, okay? All right, so I get a 2. I get a minus there. The square root of 9 is 3 plus a 1. We say that's going to be 0. Well, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, right? Negative 1 plus 1, boop, it works, okay? So the key is, again, to get this chunk, get it out of there. Get it on the other side. Square both sides. You're going to make sure you're doing it correctly like this. So you get these two terms in the front, these two in the back end, and then make sure these get multiplied by each other, the, the square root of k's and the negative ones. So you have, you have two middle terms in these, all right? And eventually you look at this and go, oh, i got to square this thing again. You got it. Okay? Let's try another one. All right? Go ahead. Take a second and copy. All right, well, let's just leave the left side the way it is. I got an S minus 8. And I'm going to move this thing over. So I have a 2 minus a, ne uh, minus a square root of S. Okay. So you know what we're going to have to do at this point. We're going to have to square this, right? Square there. Then we're going to have to square that. Let's just go ahead and write it out, what we're actually doing. You know, rather than just uh, putting a square there. We know what the answer on the left side is going to be, right? It'll just be an S minus 8. On the right side, not quite so easy. We have 2 times 2, that's 4. 2 times negative S, that's 2, the square root of S, not negative S. Oh, yeah, that's negative square root of S. Okay, so that's done. Now we have a negative F times 2. There's another one. Another negative 2, square root of S. And we have a negative square root of S times a negative square root of S, which is going to be positive, just S, right? And very nicely, these problems are contrived, so we're looking there. There's your S's, they go away. Okay, now let's go ahead and just get all this stuff.
to the left and this stuff to the right. So if we move negative 8 over, it turns into 8 plus 4. If we move both of those over, that turns into positive 4 times the square root of s is 12. All right. And just like, again, let's say you had 4a equals 12, you would go, okay, divide by 4, divide by 4. That's what you're going to do here. So that'll be a 4, and that'll be a 4, and you'll have the square root of s equals 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Then you square both sides to finish it up. So if you square this, you get an s. If you square 3, you get a 9. There we go. And now let's check it. Does it work? Well, let me put some green around this thing to kind of get it apart here. There we go. We're going to try 9 in here. Okay. Well, let's go. 9 here. 9 is 9. Okay. Then plus 9. Okay. So we have the square root of 9 minus 8. The square root of 9 minus 8 is the square root of 1, which is just 1. Uh, plus the square root of 9 is 3, which equals 2. Uh, doesn't work. Which means if we've done our work right, that there is no solution. So you can put no solution, you can put, you know, null set, an empty set, you can put a zero with right there through it, you can put a picture of a person laughing like this, as in, ha ha. You claim there is an answer. I defy you to find one and solve. Okay, there you go. All right, try A and B. Give it a pause and try A first. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just move over. I'm not going to rewrite all this stuff. This is going to equal x plus 1. Okay, so this is gone now. And we, obviously, we know we have to uh, cube this. So it's going to be this, and we'll, we'll do a shortcut on how to do this later on during the year. But for right now, we'll, you know, we can do two of these at once and then multiply that result with uh, the last remaining x plus 1. So we know the left side of this equation is going to be this. x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8 is equal to... Okay, now this part here is going to be... We'll just call it x plus 1, the very first one here. And then we know the second one is going to be x squared plus 1x plus another 1x plus 1. Okay, so that will be x cubed... Okay, and then <clears throat> let's see here, x times, two, that'll be 2x squared, then x times 1 is x, okay, done. 1 times x squared, 1 times 2x, and 1 times 1, all right? So let's just cram all this stuff together. So we got a 2x squared, we got a 1x squared, which gives us 3x squared. I'm going to do a little erasing here. 2x squared plus 1x squared. And will just give us 3x squared, okay? Now we have an x there and a 2x. That will give us a 3x. Do a little more erasing here. And then just the plus 1. So there we go, okay? Well, of course, the x cubes always go away. Oh, look at this. The 3x squared go away, too. And so we have, uh, let's see here. We can just leave the 3x on the right side, although it's just kind of creepy. Okay, so we have a, um, a 1 goes over here and becomes a negative 1, so that's a negative 9. So x, we think, is negative 3. Let's check it. All right, here's our check. All right. Okay, if x is negative 3, we have the cube root of... Uh, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. Okay? Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Positive 3 times positive 9 is plus 27 minus 8 minus x, which is the same thing as plus x minus 1 is supposed to be 0. Okay. Okay. That goes away, of course. What is the cube root of negative 8? Well, the answer to that is 2. So 2 plus 3 minus 1, we say, is 0. So there is our 1 minus 1 is 0, and I'll be jiggered. It worked. Excuse my language. There we go. Okay, that worked. All right, pause it and try B. 
All right, well, let's do the method here. I mean, we're going to just go ahead and go this, s minus 16, and I'm going to just go this goes yoink that way for minus the square root of s. Okay. All right, and of course, we're going to have to square both sides. That's an easy one. This, I'm going to go ahead and write out what actually happens when we square it, which is when we get this. Okay, the left is s minus 6. Man, I hate writing those s's. They always look like fives to me. Anyway, okay, 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times negative square root of s is negative 4 square root of s. Another one is another negative 4 square root of s. That gives me negative 8 square root of s. And then that's going to be a negative times a negative is a positive. The square root of s is an s. Okay. Gone. Okay. And I'll move this baby over here. That gives me 32 positive. This over here gives me 8 times the square root of s. We, okay, right there. That good so far? Okay. Next step, divide by 8. Divide by 8. The square root of some number is 32 divided by 8 is 4. The square root of what number is 4? And the answer is 16. Let's see if it actually works or not. Okay. Well, let's pop it in there. If we say it's 16, put a 16 in there. Put a 16 in there. So the square root of 16 minus 16 is 0. 0 plus the square root of 16 is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. There we go. Okay, we got it. All right. See you next time.